just this ungodly smell. Horrible. I started thinking, well, Sasquatch will throw rocks at you if you're in their way or something. We just heard this blood-curdling woman's like scream. I went from mad, like fighting, I'm gonna fight this person to the most dreadful fear I can't even explain. I would have done anything to not be here, to just leave. Hey guys. Hey. Hey man. Good How you to doing, see Brian? You. Good to see you. All right, good to see you too. Thanks nice for coming to meet out. You. Oh, definitely. I'm so happy. We'll go in there. We'll have a sit down first, and we'll uh, have you guys give your stories, and then we'll head out to the location. How's great. That? Sounds great. Good day oh, for it. Okay, awesome. Okay, we're here at the Brentwood with Eric and Fritz, sitting down with them over coffee. They have some amazing stories to tell, and then a little bit later, we will go to those locations. And Eric and Fritz will kind of give us the layout of what happened. So uh, thanks, guys, so much for being with us here at Bigfoots of Michigan. Great. Thanks for inviting us. Definitely. Get the word out. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We need to, uh, especially in this era, um, it, it seems like there's more and more encounters that people are having. Whether it's eyes on or just encounters kind of like you had, Fritz. Yeah. You know, where you know there's something there. You're not sure what it is, but you're interacting with it. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So uh, why don't we start with you? Let's, okay. Why don't you kind of give us an account of what exactly happened? It was uh, late in the evening, probably a little bit after sunset. And uh, I heard something out. Of, it was fall and the windows were open. I heard something out in the woods, so, you know, something bigger. Okay. And I thought, well, oh, there's probably a deer out outside. And, okay, maybe a buck or something. Yeah, maybe a buck. And well, I went outside and I sat down on the porch for a while. And after sitting on the porch for a few minutes, all of a sudden, I got this really, really intense smell of. It's, it's just hard to describe. I mean, it was like sulfur and scat and everything mixed. It was just disgusting. And something in the woods started not really barking, but like woofing at me. Or so I, I don't know exactly how to describe it. Like a hoof? Yeah. Yeah, like a hoof kind yeah. of thing. And I kind of stood up and looked around and waited a second and it did it again. And, you know, the smell was just in, so intense. And with this noise out there, I, did, I couldn't figure out what it was. And I'm running through my brain going, well, what could this possibly be? And right. couldn't come up with an answer. So uh, I was going to be intimidated on my porch by whatever it was. I figured <laughs> it's probably a, a, a buck. I'm going to scare it off. And uh -huh. So I start huffing back at it, making the same noise or as close as I could to it. Uh, then it did it again in a much more aggressive kind of sort of uh, noise. And I did it a couple more times, and it did it a couple more times. And this happened over a period of about four or five minutes. And finally, I just I said, well, whatever it is, I, I, said, I yelled out at it. I'm not afraid of you, whatever you are, you know. And then my other thought was maybe it's somebody in the neighborhood playing games okay. or, or something like that. But the smell was the thing that was just set it completely apart from something like that. Okay. Because it was, I mean, it was like nose-burning, kind of disgusting Okay. You know, it, it it was just not pleasant at all. And uh, finally I said, you know what, whatever's out there is out there. I'm going back in. And I went inside the house, closed the door. And that was the, the first encounter we had. How many times did you guys kind of exchange hoofs? Oh, I'd say probably six to ten, something like that. Okay, so it was really a back and whatever, forth. Whatever it was, was definitely trying to tell me you don't belong here. Wow. Uh, cause it was like an aggressive kind of noise. And I, did you know was, if there was any kind of history at the house or anything like your previous owner? Uh, the previous owner had said something about things being out in the woods. 
Okay. And I just kind of played it off all oh, yeah, right, whatever, you know. It's somebody playing games, you know, here you got this place in the middle of nowhere. Now we're going to see uh, how we could scare the guy before he, you know, moves right, in. Right, right. Did I thought you said before that something mm -hmm. to do with chickens or there was a a chicken pile maybe? Oh, you know what it owner? was? Yeah, what it was is the previous owner used to do a lot of hunting. Okay. And him and his friends used to butcher the... Uh, um, the deer and then they would take the the deer carcasses after they were done you know processing it and put it out in the woods and let the coyotes and all that oh, and we used to it. have all kinds of uh, turkey buzzards and that coming in all okay. the time because of that and so it was normal to just see them around and that and then you get the animals like that and I kind of wondered if it was something like that you know maybe some of them still looking around for Right, it was kind of like a known feeding spot. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Everything and anything would come in, you know, to, you know, carnivore kind of sort of stuff. Would so if it, if it was a Sasquatch, that could have been something long-standing where it was used to coming to that house and, and yeah. having some kind of food source. Yeah, you know, one of the things people should understand, too, is where the location is. There's three miles of absolutely nothing on one side. And a couple of miles back on the other side, and we're talking way in the woods. Okay, and and are you near the Cass River at all? Because I've oh, been about doing an four or five minute walk. Wow, see, I've been doing an extensive study on the Cass River for about a year now, mm -hmm. and it you know it's like connecting the dots. There have been eyewitness accounts just all around, you know, kind of encompassing the Cass River. So uh, to me, this makes sense what you're saying. Yeah, it's creepy stuff. <laughs> I could say is it's creepy. Yeah, I, sure. I, I still can't wrap my head around whatever it was that was out there. Okay, yeah, but that's interesting. Uh, how many times you went back and forth? Yeah. So there was kind of a standoff there. Oh yeah, most definitely. Whatever it was, did not want me there on that porch. Yeah. It was making noises that were aggressive. Oh. And uh, I think it was a day or two later. Um, I think it was a day or two later. We ended up having noises around the house. Oh, really? Uh, out in the woods, we heard uh, a bunch of noises and rustling, and then, and then there were some noises. Uh, I won't say the huffing, but something similar. Okay. Uh, around the house. See, it's interesting to me because I, I think, in the way of okay, there was a previous owner here mm -hmm. who kind of had a food supply for the wildlife around. So if these, let's say, Sasquatch or Bigfoot would come in and have a steady food source, and then you're the new guy in town, and it's not the food source is the not there anymore. Stopped, yeah. yeah, and they're a little <laughs> bit agitated, so they're kind of still, you know, checking out the property around to see if they could find something. And yeah, yeah, it so. could very well be. Yeah, okay. I still don't know what it was. I never saw whatever it was. It was definitely close. Okay, but it, it was you know just outside of the light. It was outside of the light, and it was, I mean, there's trees and, and brush and scrub and that, and it obscured the vi vision into the woods far enough to see. Okay, good stuff. Good stuff. Okay, so, and then you've had another encounter. Oh, what was the other one? Uh, you might want to remind me which one that was. The whooping thing? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was around the property. That was, yeah, that was, that was the, the, the night that... Uh, was a couple of days after that okay and they were there was i still can't identify what it was but it was there's was more than one i think because it seemed like it was coming from behind the house and on the side of the house and there was just like this weird woof kind of you know i i don't know how to describe it okay it's just weird never and, heard anything like it before and that makes sense to me as well because um from the port here in the state game area up to the Minden City Swamp, down to Cairo. I have coined it, you know, kind of the Sasquatch Triangle mm -hmm. because we have found various sizes and shapes of footprints. Mm -hmm. You know, I have mm -hmm. found all the way up to an 18, between 18 and 20 inch, which could belong to a male. And then we have found something smaller in the Port Huron State game area. That is also where I found the baby squatch footprint, which was, you know, I've got a picture of a beautiful print. And then we found one or two in between. So in that location, we feel like there could be a mother and a baby and then possibly one or two adolescents. And so I've been kind of searching for the big male. Where's mm -hmm. the big male at? Mm. 
Yeah. Well, you know, one of the other things is, and this is something that Eric and I had been talking about, is we went walking in the woods not too long after that, and we had found a tree, and it looked like a, a, a buck had been scratching on it, but it was way too high. It would have been like above where a moose would have been scratching. Okay. Yeah. And we both it's, looked at that and yeah, tried, tried on to On top pick. of kind of a dirt pile yeah. that it grew out of, if I recall. Mm -hmm. So it's like three feet up just from the dirt. Uh -huh. It's next to a trail. And then it's not a whole tree, it's a trunk. Yeah. And it's kind of a rotted trunk. Okay. And it goes up. Well, at the time, that must have been 15 years ago or more. Yeah. Uh, well, it was at least 10 foot above the trail. Okay. Yeah. The so it's a good ways up. That, yeah. And I looked at that and I said, you know, we very rarely get any bear down here, if ever. But even a black bear couldn't reach that high. I lived in the UP for a couple of years. Okay. I used to go feed the bears. Okay. I went down to the their equivalent of a Dairy Queen, uh -huh. and uh, I, I would visit Scar. He had a cut on his eye, <laughs> and I'd get as close to him as I am to you. Okay. And, and feed him, <laughs> and the kitchen wow. would toss him food. Wow. So you know, I'm not afraid of bears because I think they're tame like an idiot. Uh, and I know he was a pretty big bear. He couldn't have reached to the top of that stump. Okay. And, scratched it all okay, up. Okay, so that far up. And a buck couldn't do that. Right. Yeah. So we just finished um, an episode with Chippewa Indian uh, from the Bear Clan, Aaron Spencer. Mm -hmm. And he's had he had one really significant face to face uh, encounter. And uh, that's in the episode we just finished up and so I can't wait to share that. So so you've got that in mm -hmm. the same general area. And then uh, three weeks ago guy by the name of Mike Bale had a sighting. Him and his wife were sitting in the car, and there it is, a 9 to 10 footer. And uh, I went back out and measured the branch. He said there was a certain branch that kind of covered its face. That was 8 feet 4 inches. So if that, that would have meant there was another few inches above. If right. that branch was right at its face... There was another few inches, you know, up to the... Uh, you got a tall, pointy head, so it exactly. could have been a foot more. Exactly, and I also found a log that had been stepped on and crushed by what looked like a footprint. Hmm. So I've got those pictures. I went back out and measured it and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, yeah, we've got a lot of good stuff in this area. And now, you know, I'm kind of past, like, oh, wow, cool, we've got stuff in this area. I want to know why. Why yeah. this now area? Now you to put it together. Exactly. And what's really going on. Exactly. Yeah. So, all right, uh, man, thanks so much, Fritz, for uh, oh. your encounters and letting us know what happened. And in a little bit, we're going to head out to that location, and you're going to kind of show us what happened, okay? I've got a story that also relates to his place. Okay, cool. So this was uh, the winter of 2006. Okay. I, I remember because I had a carpal tunnel surgery. Okay. And, and that's why I was staying at his place. Mm -hmm. uh, he was down in Chicago taking care of some family business or something. So it was just me and my wife staying at his place, keeping an eye on the place. And I had my right hand all bandaged up. Okay. So they, and uh, we started smelling something. And, and my wife said, what the hell is that smell? I'm, my nose doesn't usually work really good. So something's got to be pretty strong for me to notice. Okay. And, and, and I'm like, well, yeah, that's got to be a skunk or something. I, I better go check. Now, this would have been February or March towards the end of winter. Mm -hmm. There's only a little bit of snow, maybe an inch. That's kind of wet and yucky out there. It's foggy. Okay. It's, I'm guessing, 8 or 9 o'clock, no later than that. Okay. Total blackness out there. He does have some lights on his property, so you can see the property itself. Mm -hmm. Um. But anyways, I, I go through the little entrance area and I open the door and I just get hit with this wall of stink. And now up river, up the Cass River, another mile and a half, two, at least two miles, there's a beet factory. And it's kind of infamous. Local people call it, mm, that's the smell of money. But it stinks, <laughs> okay? It right. stinks like rotten beets. Right. And when it's a cold, damp air... We get a lot of wind here. We have wind farms, but when the air is still and it's cold and damp like this foggy night, uh, the stink from the factory will kind of crawl along the ground and spread all over, you know, everywhere. So in my mind, I'm going, no, this has to be 
the beat factory. Nothing else can put out a stink light that sure. strong in this air environment. Right. But my nose is saying, no, but it smells like a skunk. But it doesn't smell like a skunk only. It smells like like rotten eggs, like sulfur. Okay. And then, so I'm standing there in this doorway, concentrating on my nose, taking a deep breath, going, what is that stink? It's, 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 it's skunk, it's rotten eggs, it's not the beet factory, because it's got a different type of smell, and it's also a slightly sweet turd smell. Oh. <laughs> Have you ever smelled like a turd stink, but there's a slight sweetness to the background? Of it? I know that sounds horribly Can't disgusting. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was trying really hard to put a, put words to these smells. And like I said, my nose doesn't usually work all that great, so I kind of ignore smells most of my life. <laughs> right. And But I'm like, oh, no, it has to be the factory. It has to be the factory. I couldn't make my nose obey my brain and say, okay. yes, it's just the factory. At that point... I just kind of felt like, like they say, you feel the old willies coming over. You're like, sure. oh, crap, then what is it? <laughs> right. And I remembered uh, my buddy Fritz talking about shortly after he moved in, all this whooping stuff going on around the house mm -hmm. and this huffing thing he did. I'm like, oh, my God. I, mean, I don't think much about Sasquatches, but that's kind of what they say they smell like. I, mm -hmm. I knew they used to be called the Michigan Skunk Ape. I'm like, well, if that's what this is, that's a really good name for it. And, yeah, and what's crazy about that, so so Fritz smelled it. Oh, yeah. You smelled it. I don't think I ever mentioned when we found the baby squatch footprint, uh -huh. uh, two members of my crew smelled the sulfur smell mm. in that exact location where, where Jim Ingram from the first episode was chased out of there. Uh -huh. And I went back and got the footprint of the baby squatch and then that's when we smelled it so yeah and it's a distinctive smell oh, yeah, hard to describe but it it's 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 not it's not it that darn fact nothing you could now i got so freaked out and, and i started thinking here i am my right hand is all bandaged up and swollen up <laughs> he just had surgery a few days before fritz ain't here I know he's got a gun in the house somewhere. <laughs> and I can't take out a squatch. And if it's this close to smell it, maybe it's back. Right. Maybe it's mad again. I don't know. So I, I rummaged around in his room into his closet. And sure enough, I found a rifle. Okay. And I check it. And I'm like holding it, cradling it in my right arm. I'm right-handed. And I'm checking out. I, oh, it's loaded. <laughs> Okay, Fritz believes in security. Fine, okay. I know a few things about guns. And I go back to that door, and I've talked to my wife about it a little bit, and she's getting nervous. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to step out on the porch. If it's, you know, if it's sentient like we are, it's going to go, oh, scary man with a gun. I better go away. Oh, for sure. Uh, so I start talking at it, even halfway shouting at it. I don't want to provoke it too much, but I'm like right. being stern but not aggressive. And I'm showing this gun, and the stink doesn't go away. And th this all goes on for like a half hour. Okay. This goes on, it might have been 45 minutes. But finally, my nerves are just getting so riled up. I'm like, well, I know out that direction where the smell seems to be coming from is nothing but three miles of swamp. Okay. And then there's a giant pond out there. And at this time of year, there's not going to be hunters out there, not after dark on. Right. And there's a road over that way. And Fritz has like a dog kennel over there and some stuff. So I'm like, I'm probably safe to fire a shot that way. Right. No neighbors. Cops won't know, I hope. Yeah. <laughs> the only, the, well, only, it's, it's the, only <laughs> the only aggressive behavior is I've got an account from Mayville. Mm -hmm. And uh, two gentlemen were driving, I think it was close to dark, driving down a dirt road in Mayville and they saw what they thought were just two people at first walking, you know, in front of them. Their yeah. backs were to the car right. and they were walking in front of them. So they slow down and it's too Bigfoot. <laughs> and so they're kind of like, wait, what are we seeing? Are they right? hitching a ride? Or what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, what are we seeing right here? So, they're not going to fit in the back seat. No. Right, right. So it's, it's fully not registering with these guys. So the passenger gets out, opens up the door and stands up. Um, and then once he did that, then the big, the, the two Sasquatch had stopped 
and we're looking at the car at this point. Mm -hmm. The male Sasquatch, it was a male and a female, the male Sasquatch started heading towards them. Oh. And so the driver was like, hey man, get back in the car, <laughs> get out we're of out of here. Yeah, and then they <laughs> turned around a cornfield or something and then sped off. That is the most I've heard in this area. So hopefully mm -hmm. they're more of the peaceful type. Hopefully. Hopefully. So I, I guess my nerves were just getting the better of me. And, and I thought, well, this, if anything, the smell's stronger. Now, maybe it's just in my mind that it seems stronger. So I, I'm going to have to fire a shot. Right. So I kind of crook it in my arm, and I stand out onto the porch so I can get the rifle in a safe direction. And I go, bang! And then I think, isn't that the direction of his propane tank? <laughs> oh, 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 no. Well, I aimed Obviously, high it enough it wouldn't right, right. You're still here. The I was thinking, there. I'll make sure it's about seven foot off the ground as it goes into the woods. Yeah. I didn't want to go too high because it hit who knows how far away the gun could shoot. Wow. And, but that was my thought, obviously, was, oh, my God, propane tank's over there. <laughs> but I went back in. I went outside like a half hour later. And the smell was all gone. Okay. So I went, like, maybe the gunshot showed I was serious and it went away. But, you know, maybe it thought there's yet more new strangers living in the house and they wanted to give us a welcome. I yeah, don't know. Yeah, it almost seems like they frequent that area then. Yeah. I'd say more often than not, yeah. There's, there's a, like I said, there's a giant pond out there, and there's kind of a, a half swampy seasonal pond next to that. And then there's a corridor about 100 feet, 100 yards, I'm not sure, okay. between that wet stuff they can't get through easily and his property. Okay. And then after that, there's several houses and, you know, Carol okay. Center's over there and all right. that other stuff. Right. Hey, so, you know what? And then I'm, I'm really excited about this next one. Yeah. Because I don't think I told you. Maybe you saw it in the post on the uh, group page. I went out with Aaron Spencer. We did a night walk mm -hmm. through that park. And we had three rocks thrown at us. Oh, yeah. How I know. Which is, park? Two, two you might have contested and say, well, that could have been this or that. But one. The first initial one, like I was amazing at the the aim of whatever through this. I heard it and felt it over my left shoulder <laughs> next to my ear. And, and I, I kind of had a hoodie up over my bull uh -huh. cap. And I wouldn't doubt if it brushed that because I remember kind of looking to my left going, what was that? And then whack, it hits the, hits the tree next mm. to me. And I believe I've got that on recording. Um, so that happened, and then one happened right after that, and then as we got to the front of the park, you know, that was in the back of the park, the first initial two. Once we were leaving and got to the front of the park, getting to the car, another one was like, mm. wham, almost as if to say, yeah, and stay out. Right. You know, so very intriguing. So, yeah, this next encounter that you had on, on, a, on a park bench. Yeah, it's it kind of lines up with his property, because across from his property – is this public park. And there's like that, that, that court I was describing between the big pond and swampy, you know, seasonally it's a pond. Mm -hmm. The big pond is there all year round. It makes sense to walk along the edge of his property if you want to get around the big pond and go across the river into the public park. Okay. So anyways, I went to the park. I didn't bring my dog because I was, uh, well, I just gotten my concealed weapon permit. Okay. And I had this little book on how to carry safely illegally. So okay. I, I better read this and I better read it intently. For sure. So so I go to my favorite little spot to sit. I, I, I'm a writer, so I like to write in my journal all the time everywhere I go. Nice, nice. So this time I didn't bring the journal, but I brought some from to read. And I often sit there. And... Uh, Broad daylight. It's it's uh, October, maybe November. Okay. Leaves were down, but there wasn't any snow yet. And uh, it was a bit chilly. And I brought my walking stick. This is the stick right here. <laughs> nice. And you've got some ruins or something? Yeah, I carved, carved ruins in, in it. There. I'm, into, I'm a Viking historian, and I got a degree in anthropology, so I've always been interested in you Wonderful know, cavemen and sure maybe Sasquatch, I guess. Oh, that's awesome. so I never really got into it, so I started having these weird incidents. Anyway, so I'm I'm sitting there at the park. I got the stick stuck in the ground. I read in my book, and and every few minutes, I hear a pine cone fall. Okay. Well, no big deal. I look over my shoulder. There's a bunch of pine trees behind me. 
it's fall, acorns are falling. Sure. No big deal. But uh, the, if a pine cone falls from a tree, it's gonna go bounce, bounce. And the ground's kind of spongy and the ground has some leaves. It's gonna bounce once. Mm -hmm. It'll hit the ground, bounce once, stop. So I'm ignoring it. I'm okay. focusing on this book. I gotta learn this stuff. I don't wanna break a law by accident. It's important. And I hear stuff falling, not falling, but bouncing four times. Okay. Boom, 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 boom. And finally it, it bothers me. It is over like 10, 15 minutes. Okay. Like every four or five minutes it's happening. Oh, wow. So finally I look back and I'm like, that's not stuff falling. Mm -hmm. That's something being thrown, kind of sidearm or something. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, well, it's uh, midweek, almost no one's in the park. Mm -hmm. you know, I, I like to go to the park when no one's there right. <laughs> because I can be quiet, I can write in my journal, my dog can run around off his leash breaking the rules <laughs> <laughs> and no one will catch us. And uh, so another bump, 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 bump happens and I start you know, not focusing on the book and listening for the for the sound. And I'm like, that's some dumb kids out there in the park and they're throwing sticks and stones or something at me. Maybe they like to be in the park when no one else is there, I don't right, know. Right. And then I thought, oh, wait a minute, aren't we right across from Fritz's house, pretty much? Interesting. This might be where those damn Sasquatch are heading <laughs> when they walk along the side of his property. I could be sitting in the way of a Sasquatch who wants to cross the river. Mm -hmm. That would be really creepy. And I'm like, well, at least now I can carry a gun. <laughs> a 380. If I dump the entire clip into him, Sasquatch will eat me. <laughs> <laughs> you. Right, right. There is no way this gun is going to do much to an angry Sasquatch. <laughs> no, and I don't want to shoot any Sasquatch, but I, I want to get out here in one piece. Yeah. And, 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 and being kind of a... Uh, uh, a slightly crazy guy who does Viking reenacting stuff. I had the stick next to me and I'm thinking, well, it's kind of like a spear, isn't it? And if it is just dumb kids, nothing scarier than a crazy man in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> so next time I hear something go thump, 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 thump behind me, I jump up, I turn around and I, I strike this spear-like pose and I go, whoever the hell you are, just piss off, go away. If I'm in your way, I'll be moving along in a minute. And nothing, just total silence. I go, okay. I sit back down, I lean my stick against the bench, and start reading. And I finished my chapter, and I got the hell out of there. <laughs> what is so intriguing about that story is, yeah, we had the rocks thrown at us yeah. as well, but I I'm, I'm, can't wait to get to the location because I also want to see how far it is from another incident that happened. Uh, Aaron Spencer and a friend of his were, were in a rowboat uh, fishing, mm -hmm. and there was actually um, a guy, I believe, coming with his son, so they were kayaking. And there was some space between, you know, the two boats. Yeah. And something started throwing larger rocks into the river between them. Mm -hmm. So this is this is uh, all the same kind of behavior. It's all saying, all, get the hell out. Oh, yeah, yeah. Our all spot. right in this same general mm -hmm. location. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I went back there just two weeks ago to, to, to look at the pine trees. And it's, it's, it's kind of a clearing, but there's also these really big trees growing in the clearing. Okay. And then about 40 feet back, it becomes brushy again. Okay. And, and so I figured, well, I'm gonna go take a look. Maybe I'm full of crap. There's these giant pine trees that might have huge pine cones. Maybe they bounce a bunch when they hit the ground. Okay. So I, I brought my dog and I brought my gun and I brought my stick. <laughs> and uh, I'm swatting mosquitoes. I walk in there and I look around and look up. Holy crap, they're not pine trees. They're ferns. Okay. Ferns like swampy areas. Okay. Ferns don't make pine cones. <laughs> I look at the right. ground. No pine cones here. Okay. There's leaves, there's mud, <laughs> there's sticks. So I walk to the kind of edge of this kind of clearing and I see that at some 
time, maybe ages past, a big tree fell over. You know how the roots can pull up a bunch of dirt mm -hmm. and then a tree will rot mm -hmm. and it leaves this mound of dirt and, and dead roots and stuff. And a lot of times there'll be stones stuck in the roots. Sure. So I go and look at this, I'm like, man, a good sized squash could easily hide behind this and throw rocks at me or whatever from here. For sure. Or, or kids, or I don't know. There's no rocks in the roots. Now maybe there's no rocks in that soil there, mm -hmm. or maybe they've all been thrown already. <laughs> <laughs> but it's too big an area for me to go look around and see if there's five stones laying somewhere. Right. But it definitely sticks. And there's enough head clearance where you could sidearm a bunch of sticks at the bench. Okay. But I don't think you can arc them up high because it'd catch in all the branches and stuff. Okay. So I don't, I'm not sure a human could throw the sticks at me that close. Okay. Of course, nothing hit me. Nothing got particularly close. Whatever it was, it was fairly politely telling me, hey, I need to cross the river and get the hell out of here. <laughs> right. Move along. Well, yeah. So I guess we're going to go out there and take Move a look along. today. To yeah, yeah. There. I'm excited. <laughs> so you guys ready to get on out there? All sure. right. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. All right. This is Bigfoots of Michigan. We will see you in a few minutes at the locations. Come on, Amber. We're going this way. Come. That's a good girl. Yeah, pretty close. Cool. Mm -hmm. A little dry here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Water a little good. Not too bad. You can see the bottom. It's even the same time as this, about 1.30 to 2 o'clock. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't too funny. Hi. So, this is the one, huh? Very nice. Put that there and sit here like I've done many a time. I, I was reading a book about uh, concealed carry laws because I had just gotten my permit. Okay. And I had this crappy little th silver plated 380 on me, <laughs> which, uh, you know, jams a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so I hadn't even bought myself a decent gun yet. But I. I figured this is a nice quiet place where I could finish reading this thing. So I'm, I'm very intently reading it. And uh, I started hearing what I thought was pine cones falling. Okay. And I kind of ignored it for probably 10, 15 minutes. And they were falling every three or four minutes. All right. And, uh, but they weren't falling bonk, bonk. They were going bonk, 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 bonk. Okay. Like right over your shoulder, right over no, the back right of that? behind me. I can't okay. tell you how far back. 10 feet, okay. 20 feet. So after some time, I started realizing that that sounds kind of weird for pine cones. It's this time of year. Right. It's a good time for pine cones to be falling from the trees. But they should just hit and bounce once and stop. The ground's soft. It's spongy. There's leaves on the ground. Multiple bumps. That's somebody throwing something. Okay. So I know this location pretty well. So I know there's kind of a half clearing behind me. Right. There are tall trees, but there's not much brush. So you get back like 40, 50 feet. Okay. So I thought, well, this is a day, uh, a weekday when there's not many people out here. That's when I like to come. And I thought, well, maybe there's somebody out here who's, who's a little upset that I'm here. Maybe they wanted to park for themselves too. So I looked back a couple of times. And I'm like, yeah, well, I don't see anybody. Went back to my book. Keeps happening. So after like another 10 minutes, I, I'm getting a little irritated because it's sounding more and more purposeful and not natural. Right, right. I'm not smelling anything. I'm not seeing anything. I didn't hear any walking or anything. But uh, after a bit, I started thinking, well... Sasquatch will throw rocks at you if you're in their way or something. For sure. And, I mean, I wasn't a real big Sasquatch fanatic, but I was generally aware of them. Okay. 
And then, then it could be just dumb kids or something. Right. So. About I what? What? To, what time of day was it? It's right about now, about two o'clock. Okay. Now, it's a little darker now because it's cloudy out. Okay. There was hardly any clouds. It was warmer than it is right now, but I had a jacket on. Okay. There was a breeze. It's 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 about the time the mosquitoes all die. My favorite time of year. Sure. <laughs> so, I thought, well, I'm just gonna scare them back. If it's some dumb kids, they'll think I'm a crazy old man and they'll run off. So I grab my walking stick and I do this. Ha! Quit throwing crap and get the hell out of here. And I got the same reaction I got just now. Nothing. Yeah, you know, if I was to take a guess, I would say just about there would be about where my property would line up with. It's about right. Could, could be further that way just or this way. Within a few degrees, yeah. yeah. But it's, it's almost a straight line that way. I'm pretty sure that could be about right. All right, Fritz, so we are at the location of, uh, I don't know, what do you want to call it, a grunt off? Pretty much, yeah. Okay. I don't know what else to call it. I wouldn't say Sasquatch calling because he started it. <laughs> <laughs> so this is kind of on the edge of your property. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, just kind of tell us what happened. Well, uh, that evening, uh heard some noise out, outside. Had the windows open. It was actually a warm night for the fall and had uh, came out on the porch and was decided to sit down for a minute and look around and some there was this just ungodly smell just horrible okay you know it was just i you know sulfur dung yeah everything uh, mixed together that's what i've yeah, heard even you know even though it was skunky in a way and it just I, you know i couldn't figure out what the heck it was all i know is it was really horrible and it was just intense and uh I, I started to look around, all of a sudden something out of the woods just made this noise, almost like a whoo kind of thing, and, and it, I didn't know what it was. And the first thing I thought, well, maybe I'm hearing a, a, a buck out there making a noise and, you know, sniffing at me or huffing at me or something, you know. Right. And I waited, and then all of a sudden I hear it again, and it sounds a little bit more aggressive this time. Okay. So I said, well, there's something out there, and it's... You know, if it's a, I figured, okay, it's a buck, I'll make some noise and right. get up there and I'm, whoo, you know, back at him. And a uh, couple of, maybe 20 seconds later, all of a sudden I get another, whoo, back at me. And this went on about six, seven, eight times. Wow. Over a matter of maybe four or five minutes. And then I, I finally, you know, said, well, whatever you are out there, I'm not afraid of you, you know, kind of thing, you know. Sure. And Because I, I figured, all right. I'm out here on, on the edge of everything. Right. Somebody, and we get people that come out here and trespass once in a while. I figure it's probably somebody playing games. Sure. So I'm like, oh, I'm not afraid of you, you know, and figured to leave it at that, you know. And I stood there for a minute, and uh, the smell didn't go away, and uh, I huffed again, and then something huffed back at me again, and I said, all right. All right, well, obviously there's something out there, and it's not leaving. So I went and went in the house, closed the door, and... Figured, well, we'll see what happens. Came out about a half hour later. The snow was gone. Nothing was out there. It was dark out, so I really wow. couldn't see anything. Okay, you couldn't see it, but it could see you. Oh, obviously, yeah. Well, from the porch light and everything. Sure. Yeah. All right, good stuff. I'm just going to pan out there real quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's thick. And then kind of straight back a little bit to your left is where the Cass River is at. Yeah, off, off this way. Okay, wonderful. All right. It, it, whatever it is, came up this way, and it probably came up that the, along the ridge. Because there's a couple of things. If we had time, I'd show you. And if, if the mosquitoes weren't so bad. Right. Down this way, there's where the creek goes. So it drops in the bottom, and then comes back up, and it it widens into what would have been like a little river if the water okay. was really rushing, and then it goes up, and then you walk and walk and walk and you hit the river you okay know? but it's not an easy walk because it's pretty bad well we'll do that next time okay how's that sound i mean we're gonna do our sasquatch talk coffee meeting mm -hmm. every month now and uh, that way we can kind of connect and see if we hear any more stories or anybody else has any sightings in these areas 
And uh, yeah, yeah, that's just going to be really cool. All right, Fritz. Thanks so much, man. Oh, you're such, welcome. Such a great encounter. Hang in there, Fritz. Back in the reeds. Okay. Okay. Okay, so you got a little peninsula here. Hold on um, a second. The one night, like I said, we, we walked all the way up this right here. When it was frozen, it was a lot easier to get to in the wintertime. Okay. You know what I mean? So we didn't have to go through the long trail that we did to take out here. Sure. So as soon as we came off that clearing over there, we hit that open spot where I showed you. Right. And we got on the ice. We walked all the way out here. Now, right here at this corner right here, you know, <laughs> not on the open water that way, but right here in front of us, this corner right here. We had our little fire, and I drilled a hole in the water, or in, 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 the, in the water, ice. in the ice. Frozen and, water. Uh, <laughs> we're all, we're standing right here, and we kept. I walked over to that tree line over here and over here to find wood, and we, you know, we had a little fire going on the ice. Right. And we were fishing and whatnot, and it got dark out, and uh, we had our flashlight with us, so we were good on going home. And we're standing right there, and. Out of nowhere, just from out out this way where that pine tree is, you know, okay, that, west. That that direction. We just heard this blood curdling woman's like scream that came, and we like my hook, the hair stood up on the back of my neck. I looked at him, and he looked at me. He's like, "Holy crap! Like what the hell?" We got scared. I kicked out the fire, and we took off running that way home. But it came from that direction right there, and, and like I said, what I've heard is it could be a bobcat, but. This scream was a lot, like, really Did you loud. feel it? Yeah, and I felt it, you know what I mean? And yeah. people also say that's Sasquatch. You right, know what I'm right. So I don't know exactly to this day what it was, but it came from that direction, and it made us run out of here because okay. it scared us so bad. Nice. Well, what you don't know is we did find a print uh, last week in this very... Yeah, right over there. So I think south of here. Yeah. Um, so very interesting. Um, yeah, I think this is a location. We had a sighting by Mike Bale just over here on Washburn Road of a nine-footer. Wow. So, uh, no, that just plays into more evidence. You know, Aaron Spencer has had his sighting north of here. Um, this is just more data, uh, more dots to fill in the picture. You know, we connect the dots and make a picture of it, and it's, uh, it's really looking good at this point. So uh, you had uh, another occurrence year ago, years ago when you were young? Yeah, when I was younger, we were all, you know, partying at the party spot, the gravel pit, uh, the swimming hole. And, uh, uh, you know, my 
I was a real kid though, young kid though, and I, just, we, I was having fun. We were camping for the weekend and whatnot out there, and uh, the, everybody was like sleeping besides, you know, like my brother, he was up for a minute and then he passed out, we were hanging out, and then my dad invited some friends over, and uh, he had passed out though, but they came down anyway to hang out. We're all standing there talking and whatnot, and just looking around, all of a sudden out of nowhere, it just sounded like trees were like being picked up and thrown across in the woods, you wow. know what I mean? And really scary stuff and at the same time though it could have been also you know a ufo or alien because what it was was unexplained to me and i've explained it and it just doesn't make sense but i saw a light come out over top of the trees and it was like the square shape and it had weird lights on it that weren't a solid one color and then it turned around and left and people do say there's connection like i've said between sasquatch and aliens and whatnot. right but yeah many do say but that what i don't explain is the noises in the woods we were hearing it just sounded like trees being ripped out of the ground and thrown and crushing you know it sounded like that and right no wind's gonna do that out of nowhere and it wasn't even windy that night it was summer night it was calm for sure you know what i mean so but that was when i was a lot younger but this just happened recently within the past year or two you know what i mean oh, yeah, yeah. the scream was a year weird, past yeah. year or two how how old are you now tyler i am 21 now. yeah so you're with all due respect you're only 21 right. so say 10 years ago yeah the, uh, yeah i'd say yeah well, yeah about we, that I mean, there's more sightings at the Christmas tree farm, you know, on the oh, south side of 46. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, there's a um, another location where a Sasquatch came up and stepped over the guardrail onto 46, and the guy got a good look at it. So there is a history here, and uh, yeah, we appreciate all this, Tyler. Yep. Thanks for taking Thank the time. Yep. But, yeah, it's, it's just beautiful out here right now, too. Yep. <laughs> all right, let's get a picture of you two. Father, son. Hey, guys. Brian. After probably about a year, we finally meet. Yep. You were the first guy who contacted me about your encounters. And, um, you know, I was working on a TV pilot series. We started playing with the paranormal idea. You got a hold of me, and I'm like, oh, man, I want to get together with this guy. Well, finally, we got the show up and running. Yep. And we get to meet up. So, um... We are here at a major encounter that you had. Yes. Um, so yeah, so where are we and uh, what happened? Um, we're in between a place called Quantica Sea and uh, I guess uh, the nearest other site would be Fish Point. Okay. Um, and it's a place called Hidden Harbor. Uh, it's not on the map. I'm sorry if you guys want to come out here. It's just not on there. Um, and I was just here. It was probably late October, early November-ish. Uh, this was a while ago. This was probably in 2015, I would guess. And um, I was laid off doing seasonal work. So I decided to come here to check the shore ice because uh, the, you could actually see the water. It wasn't all fragmites like it is now. Okay. Um, and I was just going to scout it for, you know, maybe another month. It might be fishing. I just wanted to see what the water looked like. And came out here. There was nobody here just like there is today yeah i parked my vehicle and started walking down the uh the access road if you want to call it it's okay. uh, it's a very off-road two track um that used to be in a little better condition and i just started walking down there and uh that's when everything happened wow and so you feel like you were kind of mirrored or followed by would you say one or two it was at least one something um something not normal on two legs and uh it almost felt like there was possibly two of them when it escorted me out um, okay. pretty hastily awesome all right well uh stay tuned for more bigfoots of michigan we're gonna head out there and we're gonna see exactly what happened so this area i was just uh explained to by brian there was a gentleman named uh art kappa um, appreciate Art Kappa. He did a lot of the groundwork, I think, for um, Brian and people like myself that have an interest in this topic. Um, Brian had said he actually tracked um, Prince, I believe you said it was from the Mazo area? Uh, from the Cairo area. From Cairo all the way up to um, Fish, Fish Point, which would be, 
I don't know, just a couple miles down the shoreline. And um, when I was growing up, I had somewhat of an interest in Bigfoot, but I thought it was always a Washington State type thing, always the Northwest, and I read some books. I never thought it'd be around here. When I was probably 17 years old, I was at a graduation party, and there was a older gentleman that was talking about Bayfoot. And I asked him, you know, what exactly do you mean by Bayfoot? And he thought it's like Bigfoot, but it's in Michigan. And I just laughed it off, never thought about anything, and now here we are. Um, so when people do say something, just listen. Don't judge them. Just listen. It might actually be valuable sometimes. Awesome. Yeah, and then once you get off the trail, this is how it always, how it is in the Phragmites. It's just sloppy, nasty. Ooh. Right over there, that little clearing there, that's where the old trail used to be. I don't know if we can get to it, but that's where I actually had my encounter. Okay. And you can see the Phragmites over there are, well, these are just cattails. And then over there, you see how they're about twice as thick and a third taller? Those are Phragmites, and they're just terrible to walk through. Okay. You can barely get through them, so we'll try to make our way over there. And you said the Phragmites are more of an invasive? Yeah, I believe they come from Africa, um, but they are the worst vegetation you'd want to, in Michigan at least, that you'd ever want to go through. I spent, unfortunately, um, whoa, at least a week um, searching for a friend that was missing on the Bay Shore. And a lot of the time I had to walk through this Phragmite and I can tell you that if you're running for your life, like, as fast as you can move through them, it's a couple miles an hour. You can walk faster than like a slow walk as fast as you can make it through there as fast as you could go. Wow. Uh, which will tie into what I'm about to explain to you and why it was so strange. Okay, well, uh, yeah. way different but yeah this is about as wide as, as the whole path was that I, when i walked down underneath all this water it wasn't like this okay well tell us what happened i got out of my vehicle like i said and probably lit a cigarette and i was walking down this this trail here and like i said on my right side if you can imagine it was just maybe one to two foot tall reed grass and a little bit of you know scrubby brush here and there sprinkled with little trees you know it wasn't any kind of solid vegetation and on the left hand side was this whole wall of phragmite which if i were to walk just a few feet into there you i just disappear you can't and you're what six i'm about six foot okay and like i was just walking and i probably got a hundred yards into my walk when it sounded like what i thought at the time was a deer that sounded like it was bedded down in the phragmite and it stood up. It sounded like it kind of quartered to me and stood up. I could just hear the vegetation kind of rub on it and hear a couple steps. And it sounded like it was maybe 35 yards in there away from me. So I kept walking. And as I kept walking, I noticed whatever it was, was also walking. And then a little further, I noticed it was not paralleling me, but coming on a beeline straight towards me like really cutting down the angle on me and i just thought to myself oh this is cool this deer is you know wondering what i am or whatever maybe i'll see a buck or or something interesting well as it got closer and closer it started stepping exactly when i would step step for step i mean ex exactly and i stopped and it stopped with me. And that's when kind of every hair on my body stood up and I was wondering what was going on. This isn't a normal animal. So I kept going and it kept step for step with me again. And I'm just like, it hit me like this is on two feet. I don't know how it's moving through this vegetation as fast as it is and nothing really made sense. So I kept 
walking, you know, I'm just trying to act like it's like not happening, trying to make sense of the matter. And I made it about another hundred yards while all the while I'm stopping and it's stopping and just like a cat and mouse game. And finally, I must have been at least several hundred yards, probably 400 yards from my vehicle. I noticed a pile of rocks off to my right and I stopped and just picked up as many as I could hold. And I started swearing and saying all kinds of the worst kind of things you'd want somebody to scream at you, a stranger in the woods. I mean, okay. I was threatening everything on this, what I thought was a person. Sure. And one, the last time when I stopped and picked up those rocks, it did not make a sound. And I said, okay, I'm going to start chucking rocks at you. And I started just hurling these. I must have thrown at least a dozen all over the area where this thing had stopped. And it was only 15 feet into the Phragmites, maybe. It wasn't very far. And uh, so I knew my rocks were landing all around it, and it never made a noise. And that's immediately when I went from mad, like, fighting, I'm going to fight this person, to the most dreadful fear I can't even explain. I would have done anything to not be here, to just leave and, and make it out. Um, I, I, I can't explain that feeling the way to do it justice. Um, so I grabbed a couple more rocks and I started backing my way back down the Phragmite line and I gave myself a wide berth away from them. And this thing went from step, 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 to I mean step, step, like it didn't sound like huge loud, like bang, bang, like it was heavy, but it was not trying to be stealthy in the least bit anymore. Okay, more aggressive. Yes. And um, once I finally made it about halfway back, it seemed like things ramped up even more. And it, I don't know if it was two things or what, but it was just all, you could hear the vegetation. And something that I didn't mention, when that thing was following me, the only time I heard vegetation was when it stood up, or what I thought, whatever stood up in the Phragmites. Okay. But when it was following me, I don't know how this is possible, but all I could hear was the footfalls. I couldn't hear it swimming through the vegetation or it like rubbing up against it, which I should have been able to hear because it was calm day, much like today, which are very few and far between. And I just don't know how something can move through that vegetation and not make any sound other than the footfalls. And then when it followed me back, I could really hear the vegetation. It was like, almost like it was trying to make more noise. And when I said I got halfway back, it almost sounded like there was two of these things or whatever. I don't know. The whole experience was just really odd and terrifying. Long story short, I made it about 15 yards away from my vehicle and I did one more glance over my shoulder. The whole time I was just head on a swivel, uh, super alert, um, freaked out. I got about 15 yards from my vehicle. I just looked over my shoulder. I didn't see anything. I dropped the rocks and I literally ran for my life to my vehicle, got in the car, slammed the door, and I never looked back. I didn't come back to this place for at least three, four years. I didn't tell anybody about it for at least several years. And uh, funny anecdotal story, the first person that I told was my fishing partner and I stopped fishing after this day. I didn't like make a plan to stop. I just, for whatever reason, I stopped. And uh, I've only been out a handful of times ever since ice fishing along this bay shore. Well, the guy I used to fish with, he was talking about wanting to come out here and it must have been four years later. And it just brought back those memories. And I had told him just to warn him, like, did I ever tell you about that thing that was following me along in Hidden Harbor? And he said, no. So I got halfway through the story explaining it just how I was explaining it to you. And I was met with, so you saw a Bigfoot. And, um, I guess that's what he thought. I never said that. I'm not claiming that's what it was, but I know for a fact it was not some hunter or hillbilly that walked three miles from the road to just magically walk through this stuff faster than any human being. Right. And can see through it to know when I'm stepping to stop when I'm stepping. It was, none of it made any sense. It was, none of it sounded natural. It just felt 
like I shouldn't be here. Gotcha. It's, it's, it's the best way I can explain it. Like I just wrong day, wrong time. I shouldn't have been here. Wow. No, what, what an absolute great encounter. I mean, you know, I lean towards Sasquatch, maybe two of them. Um, they, like you said earlier, they escorted you out of here. They wanted you to know that they were present and maybe you were in their territory. So, yeah, I don't know. And, uh, I just don't know. There's not much closure to the situation. Uh, I feel like this is one of those encounters that a lot of people wish they could see what was following them. So they know what to be scared of or what happened, but I don't know if it's a good or bad thing that I didn't see it. Um, I do know that this experience affected me much more so than the two other experiences that I have that I can relate to this topic because there's no other explanation for me. Right. Um, but it might not sound like much, but this affected me deeply. I bet. I bet. And so now what we'll do is then you actually had a sighting yes, of what you believe could be a Sasquatch. And so uh, we'll wrap it up here and uh, we'll head over to that location. Okay, for anybody that's not familiar with this uh, area of the thumb, there's a ton of these ditches. This isn't even a river, believe it or not. But there's a ton of these ditches that hook into and just crisscross the thumb and ultimately end up into the Saginaw Bay. And um, you can see anything can travel this and it's an abundant source of food, water, um, cover. It's a pretty amazing feature of the thumb that a lot of people don't think about is all this water has to get somewhere and it creates a path for any kind of animal to travel down. So then they can move around not just in the nighttime. Oh yeah. If you, if a person didn't want to be seen, you could just travel around in just these ditches and the only person you would see is maybe a kayaker. All right, Giles, we are here at the location of your sighting. So um, we are just east of Cass City, mm -hmm. north off the road, looking at a farmer's field. Yes, so uh, tell us what happened. Um, it was last year. It was before uh, bow season. It was probably October 10th or 12th ish. And I was heading to work. It was about eight o'clock in the morning, a very lightly foggy morning. You could see it, it really wasn't affecting the visibility but I was traveling down this road and I happened to look over to my left and there was a huge figure I thought it was just a, a farm hand at first and I kind of looked and before I could even get my eyes back to the road I was just like wait and I looked again and this we'll call it a human-like figure um, it was Roughly, if I had to put an exact number on it, it was like eight foot three. It was between eight foot tall and eight and a half. Okay. And uh, it was just one color, head to toe, all the same color of uh, like the color, like rust brown, orangish color that's on a calico cat. Um, kind of like a Carhartt tan, but like okay. more red. Uh, and it was just this, this figure just like frozen, just with its head, like seemed like kind of like like it was just marching along not paying attention to anything and it just froze okay i'm thinking maybe because it, it froze because we're in kind of like this little valley mm -hmm. we've got a hill to our right a hill to our left mm -hmm. you're heading to work from west to east this thing's walking from east to west it sees or hears you coming up over the road. So it's in the middle of a field. What else is it going to do but freeze? And, and that's what these things do. Yeah. Um, but I, what made me really, really grasp my attention was the, the dimensions of this thing. The chest was as deep as my shoulders are wide, which is, you know, a few feet maybe. And it, it's, as soon as I had looked at it, noticed it was weird. I've had about two and a half seconds of where I, I saw it just standing there. Okay. And I, I grabbed my attention back to the road to see if any traffic was coming. And as soon as I turned back, it was 
a half second I just went like this and it was gone. Nowhere to be found, vanished. Wow. Just moved or maybe it went down to this, this water ditch over I, here? I don't know. I mean, as big as it was, if it was laying on its belly, it would have been higher than what this corn stubble was. And this is actually corn stubble. It was similar, but there was a cornfield standing back. Where, I don't know if the viewers can see where there's a that black dirt is where it's plowed up. Okay. There's still corn standing there. Okay. But even if this thing was laying down, its chest would have been higher than what the stubble is. So I don't know where it could have went unless it is the flash. Okay. I have no idea. Now this this water trench, where where does that go? Um, this ditch or tributary, if you want to call it, um, it leads straight to the south here, and about a quarter mile from this road, or sorry, three quarters of a mile from this road, is the middle branch of the Cass River. Oh my goodness! So there's another connection to the Cass River. Yep. Okay. Well, uh, if you'd like, uh, you can walk out in the field, and then uh, we'll kind of see where it was standing in that field, and okay in a direction. All right, All right. I'll take a walk back. What I would have saw, the creature's movement, or lack thereof, um, what I saw was this thing looked like it didn't have a neck, so I'm going to put my hood up to kind of give more of a that illustration, but it was just, just like this. I could only see one, this portion of the arm sticking out, and it's like it was just froze. There, wow. there was no detail of anything. It, I couldn't. Uh, it was just the weirdest part about it was the lack of detail on the whole body. It was like it was just one color, just matte. It, it was weird. You couldn't see definition of like where the the arm joint was or anything. And I thought, you know, if, if it's clothing, I should be able to see where the upper and bottom part of the right. clothing match, unless it's coveralls. But there was no boots, gloves. It was just very odd. Yeah, I think because we're in a valley in between two hills, you came up over that hill and caught it off guard. And what do these things do? They they freeze. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many times in the woods have, have some people walk by these things without knowing they're there? Oh, I can imagine a lot. And then the amount of people that do notice them out of that percentage of people what percentage of those people are then going to actually ever say anything right right and uh, which was why it was hard for me for a while because you try to tell people that you love and i tell them because i care about them because they go often the same areas as i do and you're met with oh i believe that you believe you saw what you thought you saw but they just <laughs> and that really hurts when it's somebody that you care about oh for sure i mean i don't care about what anybody watching this video if you believe me or not i'm just giving you the honest information of things that have happened to me and i really don't care about what you people think but i do care about people that are very close to me and they just laugh it off like it's a big joke which then makes me realize how many people are like me that have maybe reached out to somebody that they care about and they just get shot down like that and then clam up because I never told anybody about any of the stuff that I had ever seen for years and as soon as I did it was met with you know basically laughter and ha 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 it's which maybe is a mechanism to help people cope because it's something they don't want to admit is actually real from somebody that they trust right you know, it's easier right. to laugh at it and if if anything if anybody watches this I don't want you to feel alone and like that you don't have anybody. You can an honest, an honestly reach out to Brian or somebody and get this off your chest um, or talk to me personally. I write, write me up, you know? Without a doubt. Um, but if this has happened to me, this has happened to a lot of other people. Sure, and with along the lines of what you were saying, 
uh, there's a safety aspect to this. Like you're going out in the woods and you need to be safe. You need to know that there are things out in the woods. And with that in mind, um, you had a cougar sighting not oh, too yes. far from here years ago. I mean, there's always been um, people saying, oh, there's no cougar in the thumb of Michigan and stuff like that. You know, we ran into that with Aaron and uh, it's like, no, they're here. They may not be everywhere, but they're here. Yes, so, sir. Um, yeah, I'll touch on that briefly. I was, um, oh man, I had to have been 20 years old. So this is 15, 16, 17 years ago now. Um, I was driving down a back road and we were going extremely slow because my uh, friend had what he thought was a show car at the time. So we're just idling literally four miles an hour down the road and a deer comes flying out no more than 40 yards ahead of us and then a second later this huge cat comes out right after it hot on its tail um and i after i started thinking about it i asked my friend i said uh that wasn't a normal cat that thing was huge he goes yeah and we were both kind of shaken to the core but um on your average dirt road i bet you this thing from head to tail it was almost half of the dirt road itself it was i mean it was huge uh just caught me in awe like i can't believe i just saw that and uh i know there's there's other people that claim to have seen uh, uh mountain lions cougars around here and uh they're afraid to tell people about it because they'll for shame you know like i haven't seen that so there's no way you could have seen it right um so if there's that kind of shame linked to that kind of sharing of information then there has to be a ton of people that have similar stories to mine that have information to help and get off their chest and how many people aren't being heard you know exactly so i maybe have sh shared that cougar sighting with five people my whole life you know yep uh and then yeah, i kind of figure what's the sense of beating a dead horse everyone doesn't believe you anyway you know for sure for sure well gals um we want to thank you for coming out um telling us your story and uh yeah i mean what else can we say but thank you and uh we're gonna love having this episode on bigfoots of michigan so thank you so much gals oh uh, thank you uh I'm, I'm glad everybody took the time out to uh listen to this information and thanks for having me <laughs>